saying 365 shake my hand. I don't know when you guys will see this video. This video will be part of one of my uh, war rooms. Right, so, because right now I don't have the time to do a full take, but I, want, I just want to talk to you guys about a post that I've just made on my Instagram, social media, and I've sent it to be posted on our 365 page. Euro USD, which is going to be technically, I guess, the first pending order for at least for the accounts that you guys are going to be following. Euro USD is going to be one of the first um, um, that, that I want you to keep track of. And, and I want to do the pending order. I want to calculate risk size. And I want to do that. Um, and I should have restarted my computer because my computer is actually acting out. But I also want to do that in a way where we incorporate our spreadsheet, the master spreadsheet that we spoke about in uh, War Room number 45. So if you haven't watched War Room number 45, please do that right now. All right, so I didn't tell anyone I was recording as well, so there'll be a lot of background noise, I do apologize. Um, right, so with this, depending on the screen that I'm on, depending on the screen that I'm on, um, let's see what I'm sharing. So I'm sharing, all right, so we'll come back to this. Let's go back to trade view first so we can actually see the chart. So this is your USD, guys. First of all, shout out to 365 analysis. We did not break. This is, is, you guys are asking me about positional trading and I should do war rooms around that, which I still will. Trust me, let's first analyze all the assets this week and then we'll start getting positional plays for our count number two but if you had listened to me last year you were covered i told you euro usd is going to fall for the whole year did i lie did i lie no and this is a consistent thing about the forex markets i find the forex markets one of the most easily accessible you know brilliantly predictable uh, um, assets so now this is it from may all the way down here you can start the fall from the month of January when I started to tell you that this is going to be a sell profile. It hit a demand, so it went up. Fresh touch retest. 365 tips book knowledge. If you've done our course, you'll know our module one really bases a lot of information around this particular you know, sell strategy. So most banks, most institutional traders, I can tell you, apart from my personal accounts, my corporate accounts, we held on until the weekly demands down here. So right now, as I speak as a 365 person, there is not a single sell position I'm in in that asset. And the post that I just made, guys, was just really addressing that. Like, what do I do? You know, I want to sell because I know that price has not yet arrived at a governing demand, right? So that's number one. So I, I, as a, I should always know where price is going, right? So, 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 so I think it was like 1, 108, somewhere there if you do a clean multiple time frame analysis. So I haven't arrived at a governing demand. The urge to buy is quite high now because look, December was quite up for the Euro. And now look, January is looking a little bit up for the Euro too. So we've got two strong months, excuse me. But if you've done my module one, you will know that this is okay. We need to see this happen. We need strong retracements. We need to see complicated 365 channels. We need to see uh, the creation of order blocks. In fact. We call this particular pattern, if you take our course, a counter trend. It is a trend leading us aside, a distraction before the hour of action. I don't even know why I just said that, right? That was just a stupid rhyme, right? So this could happen. So we could have something like this, and then only in May, this continues, or March, or in the second financial quarter, or even next month. I don't know, right? This thing could start dropping right now. I mean, I mean, we could literally locate some supplies somewhere in here, and then it does a, a deep dive there. But the problem is, for someone like me, who's patient and a swing trader, and that means for me, I only want a big slice of the cake. If I'm risking money and I'm getting to a position, I want to get in where it's absolutely safest, where I can hold for the most because I'm a trader. So I don't really, you know, evolve my life around a four-week payment, right? Sometimes if you're starting off a trading career, then you have to consider that. You have to consider that it is your first time trading and you want to make money at least to start meeting your month-to-month -month bills and then later on you want to grow out of that anything in life that causes you to take out money every four weeks outside of your child's school fees you want to get rid of that what does it mean as quickly as possible get out of debt 
If every at the end of the month, there's someone who's taking money from your bank account because you owe them money, get out of debt. I'll give you guys a beautiful debt plan that worked very well for me a couple of years ago. I got it from one of Bob Proctor's books, right? So, so, so I'll explain how it worked. I was disciplined, got out of debt. But number two, what else? What else in your life costs you every four weeks? Of course, rent. You want to get out of renting. Promise you. It's not easy. It takes time. And you want to do it professionally, like not professionally, you want to do it systematically. Be careful of not renting just to jump into a bank loan and then still have to pay the banks for every four weeks for the next 20 years of your life. Some of you, if you were to just to listen, guys, if I start dropping my $1,000 investment in the crypto coin, how much that investment made from January to January, you would be shocked. There is no way if anyone did something small like that, you would be terribly shocked at how much property you can buy this year on a thousand US dollar investment on the right coin. Which reminds me, both in three years program, don't forget it's January, we're back on. I think the dip, uh, it, it's most likely will happen, but I'm gonna shift us. So January, February, March, the first financial quarter of the year, we, I'm gonna be telling you guys to put money where I am putting money in the metaverse. So I'm gonna be looking at the metaverse. If you haven't joined, the, the Wealthy in Three Years program, please, please link down below somewhere. Join that, right? Because that's an investor's thing. All you do is you get a financial note from me. So far, only one went out in October. I anticipated a dip happening in December. Thank God we didn't buy at the top because as investors, we wouldn't necessarily be losing money. But I just don't know all of you personally. So you guys would be carrying a negative 43% on Bitcoin. And I don't know how many of you would panic sell. So that's why if I feel like the markets are going to dip, I don't send out any particular type of financial notes. Uh, but your one-year subscription rolls on. So nobody lost month two and three, November and December, because I didn't send a note. No, you so far you only received one note, you're owed 11. And that's just how it works. It's nice to treat people fairly, etc. Right, so anyway, EURUSD. It's too low to sell from a governing perspective, but it's not low enough to buy. I'm like, damn, I'm stuck. So what do I do? Engage in a multiple time frame analysis. So I'm, I'm getting, I can feel myself getting itchy, getting itchy, you know, to, to, to start trading. And, and I, have to, I, I have to scratch the itch. You know, sometimes my, my first few trades might actually be a flat loss, you know, just to get back into it. Let's have a look. So on the weekly time frame, we've got this weird situation going on. It looks like a bearish flag to me, which means at some point in time, price is going to stop climbing up just so it can sell a little bit higher. Selling up here for me is so much better, right? Uh, because I still believe my governor is still in charge, which is a selling structure. Why is price going up? Well, we know. If you've done the course, you'll know that markets arrived at an incomprehensible, well-articulated demand. It's time for price to choppy, 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 make its way up. But I'll be looking for a play here. And this whole area here is, is, seems congested with some selling opportunity. And this is where we sold last year, by the way, right? This looks like a, a good place where we added our final Euro USD positions in October last year. Those of you who are following me, right? But we've got a, a you know a nice strong supply there. We've got another nice strong supply there. So this entire block is made out of supply. So all I want is some movement into the yellow zone. So that's the weekly. On the daily time frame, we get to this structure. This is remember this. This is where we started to sell somewhere here. The the the, the even, even the risk reward ratio marking is there. So it's a, I think Euro USD was about. 35% contribution to my entire Forex portfolio last year. I mean, I, I just kept hammering this asset because it kept being cleanly predictable because we understood, right? So check this, these, these buy orders completely, completely uncontradicted right now, completely uncontradicted, right? So price is, is really, you know, hanging around here because of whatever happened somewhere down there, right? So all of this cluster in here is demands that triggered this to go up, right? And price is not coming up there. So now on the day, if I can turn your focus on here, this is where I want to see a play. I was looking at this and I didn't like it, but I want to take a trade, right? And I noticed that, you know, there is some type of consolidation. Consolidation when price starts to trade sideways, right? And then, then you have our brothers and sisters who, who, who out of coincidence, ignorance and choice, 
right, will remain trading strategies that don't always offer them the maximum gains, stuff like support and resistance, as if, you know, whatever, as if we're not here to help them, right? So, look, so the, 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 there's a range, this is called the market range, well, you know, you know, supporters and supporters and etc. And then there's a breakout. I like breakouts. When things break out, it means institutions have all, I've woken up and they have burnt a couple of retail traders. Who got burnt here? Most retail traders who saw price come to this line and sell, price cut and sell. So they try to sell because remember, in most retail trading strategies, you wait for confirmation. Confirmation is based on market memory. Therefore, for them, if markets have done it before, it will do it again. So those who tried to sell here got burnt. Good. Now that I know that there was an opposing move in the market, I want to deal with that. I want to see if there's an opportunity waiting for me. I'm going to delete these lines because they actually know me. Right. So now I'm starting to look for the stuff that I know. So I can see here that there's a bullish-ish looking demand on the daily time frame. That's number one. But that's not good enough for me to buy um, because number one, you know, it is, it's not really in line with, with the governor, etc., etc. And And the risk, the trade that I want to take is actually quite high risk. I like what I'm seeing here. This entire yellow grid is the weekly supply. So now I can then orchestrate this is the same supply. I can then pull out a daily supply inside here. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Right. So I can guarantee you I will be selling here one day. Not just as a matter of guarantee, but I'm definitely going to start to figure out where and how I can then add this into my pending order. What I don't like about this sell is the fact that if I look to the left, it kind of should look like this. And maybe, uh, you, know, at, you know, dealing with issues of risk to reward ratio, for now, I should accept that this sale, for it to work, my stop loss has to be outside there. And then hopefully, you know, stand the test of time all the way down to, to where I believe the market reversal, change of a trend, Will occur. You know what? This video is so good. I'm just going to release it right now as it is. I'm never going to wait to record a full world because I'm happy with this trade idea. So I'm happy with this sell. Beautiful risk to reward. Almost one is to four a day. That's fine. That's trade idea one on Euro USD. But that's not what's going to happen right now. What's going to happen right now, potentially, you remember where our brothers and sisters in arms got burnt here, retail traders. We have a break of market structure. I have something that looks like a demand uh, a here, and I have something that feels like an uptrend channel-ish somewhere there. All right, so based on all these particular things, I'm interested to know what happened in this breakup structure. So I'm going to go to the H4 time frame. Remember, we've got the sell down. All right, so right by the breakup structure on the H4 time frame is another demand. This demand is a little bit outside the daily demand. I'll show you the daily demand one more time. That's the daily demand. If we can draw the wick, maybe to get a good area of competition, maybe that might help us. Maybe that might help us. Please comment down below if this is also something you want to see more in the channel. And, and I specifically mean one asset per video. It means a lot of videos. So are you guys going to watch them? Because I, I, I don't mind doing one big war room with a couple of assets. But if this format is better for you, um, I can mix it up, basically. I, you know, it won't just be me abandoning the war room format it'll be me mixing it up here and there right so i'm going to delete this just so the chart remains neat that's because the weekly supply we no longer need it so we've got a strong daily zone and i'm investigating yes i've got a daily demand somewhere down there and if i go to h4 i've got two demands i've got stuff inside the green zone which is confluent with the daily and i've got this standalone soldier this demand to me seems like the one that became the opposing zone that broke this supply broke this entire market structure you know all these touches all these touches and just defied broke that previous supply that you can see on your left here it really defied the odds so what are the odds is what i'm asking myself of price returning here of break of structure because now if, if you think about all the trading textbooks we start to combine knowledge we know that price loves to do retests so we know that when markets break out of a structure, it will come back and then leave, right? So that's not enough for me to take a trade. But when I find out that markets have broken out of a structure and there's a possibility of a retest and that retest carries with it a valid demand, 
then show I'm interested, right? So I've got a valid demand there. And I'm like, yeah, I could definitely take that trade. So this is going to be a, a trade on a smaller time frame, almost similar to our AUD JPY. We're just going to have to approach with confidence, but also with the knowledge that all trading involves necessary risk and we could lose money because price could dig deeper. If you want to really hold it, you're going to have to have an entry point here and a stop loss all the way down there, which to me is not really worth it because it's not like for me a long-term swing. It's only 90 pips. Right, so if you just want to be one of those people who are safe, then and you're like, look, Leroy, price could come to any of these other demands, and you are right. Price could come there. Just for the record, you are absolutely right. You might want to hold it like that, right? Just delete this. You might want to hold the whole zone like that and put your stop loss under the tree. I understand that, right? As long as you can get a good risk reward ratio back to that sell place there. But I'm going to take it one step further and just fine tune this area of value and go to the H1 time because I really want to see. A clean move. When I see break of structure, I want the conviction to destroy retail traders to be strong. Look at this buy. Remember this white line, ladies and gentlemen, is a break of structure. It is literally where price decided to abandon and obliterate the very idea of where retail traders believe markets should have stopped to sell. And I like it. So for me and my trading account, it's looking something like this. I'm basically capturing that first H4 area of value. I've already posted this up again on my Twitter. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. You find uh, a similar setup that looks like this. And I'm just looking for a fair play, man. I'm looking for price to come back somewhere down here, and then the battle starts because then there's going to be something like this, you know, something to do with this drop here. And what about this drop here, right? So I don't know how long. You know this trade is gonna last i don't know what's going on with the dollar i mean i'm, I'm going through this charts holistically so later on when i've seen every single chart i'll have a better look but yeah uh, i would like to get my feet wet with euro usd buy trade definitely excited about the sell trade now that i know this all right now that i've factored all these things in let's let's talk about the spreadsheet let's talk about the spreadsheet baby right there we go there's a spreadsheet here Right, so 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 this is this this is nice about COT data, right? Look at this. You 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 can't get a strong conviction about about this kind of stuff. Look look at the 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 the, the specific nature of, of, of this particular asset, right? You've got price literally playing around. You've got forty nine percent longs, fifty percent shorts. 49% long. Like, so they've been creating specific ranges for a very, very long time, right? For a very long time, not being very clearly, you know, distinct about their bias. Price has been literally 50 50, right? Creating this range in format. And you need to know this because remember, we spoke about this in our previous war room that I don't like, that's why I'm not in any cells, swing cells, anyways. It's just a neutral bias. Neutral bias, guys, is not is not massive conviction. Yes, supply and demand is still has been operating throughout the neutral bias. That's why I always tell people: do not wait for or only rely on supply and uh, on COT data to actually make a trade. It is dangerous to do so. What you want to do is to always look at your market structure. Your market structure. Your market structure. Is, is the key thing, but this will help you, you know, you know, gather some stuff. Now, if you look at our sentiment indicator, you can see that the sentiment of both institutions, right, commercial institutions, uh, sorry, commercials in here, right, which are your corporates who are hedging, and your non-commercial like banks and like us, the sentiment indicator, all of it is moving towards uh, uh, selling. All of it is moving towards selling. And the reason for that is because it makes so much more sense to be on the sell side up until price arrives at a, a, a governing demand. I mean, that's really what we want to actually change our minds. So we've got this here, but the most important part, just to remind you guys about the spreadsheet, I'm going to do this on the 6,000 US dollar account. So that's about the 90,000 rand pot. You see, I haven't done anything from the last time I made a video for you guys on Sunday. Because I've been busy with the podcast and all these other cool things. Right. So I'm going to teach you now what I meant by why this question is so important. So today, 
we are going to start to fill in here. So we want to put in our pending order list, number one, move that into our live accounts, right, number two. But we're going to remind ourselves of rules of engagement because trading is not a game. It's not a quick rich get scheme. you got to be articulate. you got to be a good risk manager. You have to know what you are doing. So if you're listening and the stuff looks cool, but you haven't taken the course, do not risk money under my name. Learn first. Right, so we said on the $6,000, remember this is my account. You need to do this for your account. Where I say $6,000, you put in your $100, US, you put in your $10 million, US, whatever your account is, you need to know the maths. 1% of my account is $60. And I'm like, no, I don't want to risk $60 of my account. I want to have a maximum, maximum pain. And for me, that's always 5% of the overall account. Sometimes it just depends on the account size. You saw it was different for the 25,000 US dollar account, and it's going to be different for the 6,000 US dollar account. These things vary for an absolute reason. Right? 5% of 6,000 US dollars, by the way, is $300. But even for me, I was like, I don't want to, that's, that's too much for a small account like 6,000. So I said my maximum pay is 250. Then we're trading in clusters. Don't forget, trading in clusters. So I want to know in a cluster of 20 and my maximum loss is 250. So simple, 250 divided by 20 means I am only risking $12.50 per trade. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, head trader of 365 Trading Academy is gonna be using a lot size small enough to only risk $12 per trade because I know lot sizes don't grow accounts. Consistency, discipline, repetition of what works grows accounts. I've been doing this long enough to tell you that I could go one big standard lot size on this. And if the trade works, hip hip hooray, I'm going to make money. But if I'm wrong, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to lose a lot of capital. It's going to impact my confidence. It's going to make me not believe in my strategy. My trading psychology is going to be a mess. My next 10 trades from there on are bound to be terrible trades. Why would I try and gratify one big trade just so I can lose 15 other trades, right? I value capital, right? So let's do that. So because of that, wh why I want to walk you through this is remember in, in, in War Room 45, um, 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 and please, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably hopefully remember to put a, a link up there, but just go through our, our, our YouTube channel and look for War Room 45 slash 2022. I, I, I put in all the links that you need. The links in there basically uh, um, 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 give you a very good idea of what you need to be looking at. So, so where, do, where do I go for, 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 for PIP calculations like we have here? So I'm gonna go here, position size and risk calculator. All right, I'll probably remember to add the, the, the link before. Um, USD, I'm gonna look for Euro USD. And then um, remember account balance. If I put 6,000 US dollars, it's going to calculate me risking for 6,000 US dollars. I'm not doing that. I am risking for my maximum pay, which is 250 US dollars. Uh, we can first of all start off by calculating how big our stop loss is going to be. Remember, you need to, you need to know this stuff. So I'm gonna go to the H4 time frame. I'm gonna go to the H4 time frame. Right, because that's where I want to buy. And this 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 looks like it might happen maybe tomorrow or later on today or Tuesday, or markets might decide nah, they're not interested in BB. Right. So there's my zone H4. And inside this H4, just so we're all clear, there's an H1 trade that I'm taking. Right. H1 just looks cooler to post. Uh the bigger the time frame, the safer I feel. So I'm gonna I'm gonna map it out on H4, but it is technically an H1 execution type of trade. Right, so, so there it is there. I'm just gonna give my stop loss and going to breathe. I am cut, remember, I'm risking the green box where I enter and where price will stop me out. So that's 24 pips. That's beautiful, right? So that's not too big. That's not too big. 24 pips, 25, let's make it 25 pips. Right, so I'm gonna come here and say, look man, my stop loss in pip size, so that's what it wants, is 25. I, I, I know that. And then it's, it wants to know, look, do you wanna risk 5% of 250 or what? Let's leave it at 5% and see what it says. Look at that. Money at risk is $12.50.
and I'm risking 5% of my maximum. But to do that in trading, I then have to go 0, 0, 0,05. That's the lot size I have to use to maintain this. Remember, I've already calculated. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. I, I, I'm matching everything before I trade with my spreadsheet. My spreadsheet says, for me now, I can only risk top dollars fifty per trade, and I'm hoping to TP at a minimum of thirty-seven dollars fifty, which gives me a risk to reward ratio of one to three. All I have to do is to do this twenty times, and if I do it twenty times correctly, I will get seven hundred and twenty US dollars while risking very minimum per trade. I like the idea. The idea sounds sound, but because these calculations, guys, are fundamentally based off different platforms, could be trade. But if you're a broker, uh, and they're different, so that's why when I give signals, I always ask people to do signals. How does your signal service provider know which broker you're using? Because 1, 1234 on TradeView won't always be 1, 1234 on Avatrade or Exynos or, or, or Saxo or Capital.com or your Exynos broker. These brokers fill orders according to the liquidity pool. So it might be similar zones, but my entry point in yours are different. That's why signals, generally speaking, don't grow accounts. You have to acquire the skills. So when you're looking at your individual portfolio with your own broker, you actually know what to do. I've shown you a zone. Now you need to go carefully, make sure you map it out onto your trading account. So I'm going to open now my live account and we're going to start to, to, to do the work. So I'm going to share screen one with you. This video is about to come to an end. 365, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, if this helped you, right? We don't know if it's going to be a winner or a loser, but all I am doing and all I can do is to be transparent with you day in, day out, right? So this is the daily, right? So remember, I'm watching your USD. This is my 6,000 US dollar account. It is right here, a live, real account. Yada, 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 yada. May, may God help us this year, please, from, from, from forex scammers and liars and, and, and all sorts of things. Right, so this is the daily. Let's go to the H4 time frame. Let's work out where we were on trade. Let's work that out quickly. Uh, right, there we go. So I'm assuming that you are assuming that this is the zone that we were speaking about together, right? So there is that nice H4 zone that I liked. But let's double confirm and find out what's going on with my broker, right? That's nice. You see there? Right. So, so, so somewhere in there is that break of market structure that I'll be referring to. And then we can go to H1 to double confirm it. There it is. Beautiful base. H1 time frame. Yada, 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 yada. You know, like, like you know, maybe on my big account, I'd have a standard lot size right there and then a smaller lot size covering the H4 order block. So what I'm saying is this is, a, this is the tighter niche. There's a nice H1 flow, uh, which would tremendously reduce. See, so when you reduce how big your area of value is like that, right? What happens is you get to increase your lot size. So if our area of value now, if we go back to the PIP calculator just for funds and giggles, and we say, actually, it's not longer 25 PIPs, it is, that looks to me like 13 pips. So let's just call it 14 pips. So if we go back to the calculator and say, I've somehow managed to reduce my area of value, and my area of value is now 14 pips. Look what happens. So you get to risk 14 pips. Right. So you're still risking 12 US dollars, right, and 50 cents. So it's still in line with your plan. But now you have increased your lot size from 0 0.05 to 0 0.08, which is technically 0 0.09, which means for every pip moving forward, you make more money. Now I could do that. I could say, I'm gonna narrow, like I said to you guys earlier on, I do wanna narrow this down to a one hour. So in one of my corporate accounts, I'm definitely gonna do that. But here, we're gonna stick to the basics. We're gonna start to grow people bit by bit. We're not gonna do a lot of fences. So I'm gonna keep it H4 fully covered so that we are in line with our area of competition. And then I'm gonna do this, right? Double check us, you see there, that's about 20. So on my broker, it's not even 25 pips, it's like 22, which is even better. Now, now that this is done, and today I'm doing everything manual, there's actually like, if I put my algo trading, I'll show you this cool bot that I have that does all of this stuff for me, but because 
you we are starting a new year let's let's get those basics ironed up so now i'm going to put out some 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 lines that will highlight exactly what i want my area of competition is outside that week my stop loss is just below something like that now let's double confirm that i'm not over risking that is i'm not going over 25 pips okay so now i'm like 27 pips and you know let's just double check on the calculator what that will do to my account right so it's going to be 0 0.046 ish uh unless if i tighten my stop loss to somewhere there just just to keep it at 0 0.05 but 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 basically now what the calculator is telling me and i must do it you mustn't cheat calculator is saying look if your area buy is not 27 pips and you still want to maintain five percent of your maximum pay which means you want to risk top dollars 50 cents you are gonna you have to use 0 0.04 this is like six or so one could go i could just round it up to 0 0.05 you could, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying, stick to, to the calculator. Right, let's go to the live trade. Right, so now I'm hoping I'm sharing the right screen with you, Euro USD short term buy. Right, so I'm gonna come here now, new order, and I'm gonna place an order. Uh, the small screen popped up. There we go. So let's go with 0 0.05 for now. And then I'm, it's never, I never do market execution. It's going to be a buy limit order right so my entry price is this one and I, I need the final amount i'm risking to reflect what the calculator said or more importantly reflect what i'm willing to risk if it doesn't i have to delete that order and make adjustments so that's my entry price right i'm entering at where am i going to buy here so that's price then there's my stop loss my stop loss is one comma one three five zero five all right uh do i ever take profit well probably when i exit when it's not time to sell to be honest with you i when i exit make it big on the daily right so i want to exit somewhere there personally Right. So I'm gonna make it much, much tighter, right? So there's my exit one comma something. One comma one five four seven six. And remember, for the next few days, if we are right and if we get triggered and if this buy works, the moment we get to $37.50, you could exit to maintain that one is to three risk reward ratio. What is better normally is to lock profits there allow price to leave that area and then lock profits at 37 dollars 50 in case this trade gives you more than your minimum but you need to make sure you get your minimum no matter what right then i place the trade right buy limit has been set i hit okay now it's not yet over because i need to hover around my stop you see my stop loss is telling me look dude you are risking 13 dollars 20 cents now a I could leave that alone as is and say, you know what, for this trade, I'm going to risk $13. And for trade two, I'm going to risk $11 and even it out. That's a possibility. The, 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 the likelihood that traders remember to do that is quite tricky. It's a different thing. But you do want to keep to your plan of $12.50 maximum. And the, the take profit is $85. That's a powerful, very good risk. It almost sounds like one is to five or one is to four risk to reward ratio, which is good because to be honest with you, we really should be thinking of coming out here where this daily supply was put in, right, right there. There's a daily supply in there. So somewhere there would be a good place to exit and somewhere there hopefully would offer us at least see 27 bucks. So this is, this is really, 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 really starting to look like a bad idea on the daily time frame. Let's go to our one hour time frame where we're actually taking the trade. Because I'm not happy now, you know. I'm not happy. I am not happy with this. Uh, okay, I've messed up one of the lines, but that's fine. Uh, hurry up. Right, so this is where we are. Right, so I'm going to do micro adjustments now based on the one hour time frame, like I told you. Uh, number one, I'm going to make sure my base is there. And I'm going to tighten my stop loss to somewhere there, which now means officially I am risking about nine US dollars on this trade alone. Right, because I've just tightened my area of value. 
But I now run the risk of price getting to this blue zone and turning without me. Let's hope not. And my 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 my, my take profit is still all the way up there. Right? It's twenty seven US dollars, and and that's fine for risking nine dollars, nine eighteen twenty seven. That's one is to three, and it sounds like a little money. And, and and that's where you go wrong as a trader because you have to live this life multiple times. So we've got the supply here. I'm opening the retest that will send price down. And then now from an H4 perspective, hopefully I can push price up there. Right, giving me that 44 US dollars win. So this trade idea in front of me is perfect enough to meet me at where I want. If I am wrong, I only lose $9. If I am right, I make 45. If I'm wrong, I lose less of what it is that I'm meant to risk anyways, right? You saw the adjustments, you saw me understanding, walking the whole thing through. But if I am right, I make more than it. I am required to make on a minimum perspective, right? Now that that's done, I'm going to open this here, uh, pending order list. Because it's not yet something that has been executed yet. It's just a pending order. So I'm going to write Euro USD on our spreadsheet. Uh, which uh, uh, date when pending order was set, not when it was activated. When did I actually set it? Today is the 18th of January. Uh, I think it's a Tuesday. I don't even know why I'm writing like that. Right, and I'm hoping to buy. So it's a buy limit. It's a buy limit. Buy. This is five traders. Remember, I did say as soon as I'm done adding the week of the 11th of January, which was last week, onto every slide of this, I will upload this. It looks like my afternoon is free today, so I'll do that today for you guys and then upload this, right? Right, so entry point. So now entry point, now that you've set the pending order and you're happy with the pending order, I like to just work off the live platform. So I come and read down here. See this here? Everything, everything I just did is in here. So buy limit, there's my lot size. So here's my entry point here, price. So I'm just typing this on the spreadsheet while you guys are watching the live account. Uh, price where I'm entering is one comma one three six nine zero. My stop loss placement is the next one is one comma one three five four five, right? And my profit target, which would be my TP one comma one four five seven six. Uh, um, um, uh, and I'm risking about one is to four, wouldn't you say? I would say about one is to four, give or take. Uh, uh, and this is this number here that's moving, by the way, this is where price is right now. This is where price is dense right now. So don't get confused by that. Right. So so all that is inside my 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 pin in order. I will have to at some point calculate this reward ratio. Easier, far much more easier to do all of that on trade. Route. But you can see that our plan needs us to. We have to literally put these things in how much am i risking in dollars you saw you just go to the stop loss line and you hover well here after putting everything on the real life account i'm only risking nine dollars 25 cents all right fantastic nine dollars 25 cents you put that in I, I suspected it was never general and it was in currencies Right, so it's $9.25, my risk to reward. Let's quickly put that in from uh, trade view, which I'm sure will be easier. Right, so we're gonna take that one hour trade, H4 covering looking trade. Um, right, H4, and I am targeting I just want to make sure it's the exact same uh, in the live account. Otherwise, you're gonna put down the wrong. So this is my tool for measuring risk reward ratio. You remember that. So there we go, H4. So I'm buying just underneath the base of this trade here like that. I'm buying there. Because remember, we're using an, I'm, use, I'm using an H1 entry. There we go, see that? I'm using an H1 entry. And then I adjust my stop loss to reflect what it is that I said I was gonna do, which was just underneath there. And if you notice, my stop loss is also just underneath the H4 or the block, right? So that's perfect. Right, and then my exit uh, is just above this top supply, right there. Right, and so I'm getting a good, you know, one is to seven, something something remotely close to one is to seven risk to reward. 
and uh, according to trade view, but I need to match it with the actual real account. The actual real account, I'm going to make $44.30 profit. So all I do is just simple math. I'm just going to divide just to double check because on the real account in trade view, because of the difference in these little numbers, it makes up a magnificent difference, guys. If you're a trader doesn't even know how to calculate the spread and how it can impact your trading, there's still a lot you need to learn. So in my live account, it's technically one is to five, not this beautiful one is to seven. But remember, minimally, I am only supposed to be gunning for one is to three. So one is to five is perfect. Profit target uh, 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 here, I normally like to only write this in when I have won the trade. So profit target, I'm going to put the dollar mark in. So I already know where it's going here. So here's now for the dollar amount, and I'm going to talk about win or loss later on. And here I'm just going to put H1 for the intraday trade, right? So our first trade done together. I've explained the logic behind the trade. I've put it in. I've aligned it with this. And remember, this is going to be trade one. So now I'm looking to create 20 trades, not 20 pending orders. I need to actually make 20 executable trades on my trading journal to know that I now have a cluster of 20 to then assess myself as a trader. But through it all, the maximum I can lose is 250 of this account. So I can't always overgo until I blow the account. But guys, I hope you like this video, 365. You've got my first trade, you've got my first book in the journal. Um, um, we, 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 did, we did, we touched on quite a bit. We looked at a little bit of the COT data to show why as a swing to positional trade, I wanna do nothing right now, right? Because the banks are playing mind games, right? They're, they're pumping up to take down, pumping up to take down. They're maintaining a balance. They're waiting for something. They're waiting for the CPI, the Euro and the US saga, the interest rate saga, the inflation fear. They're waiting for direction. And I suspect when we get that, we'll start to see momentum. But right now, sentiment indicator points to more sell side. Oh, we're about to go before putting in our, our good trade. Remember, we found a brilliant sell trade. Right, so maybe not to make this video long, I'm not going to waste your time. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, guys, on my platform. I'm going to calculate risk to reward ratio, sell here, and then we'll put that pending order there. Maybe why, 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 why? Let's do it together. I mean, it's up to you if you want to. I would like to do it with you so that we are both on the same page. So remember, it's a short term buy, right? And we want to, the reason why I want to end this buy here is because look, there's an uptrend come to an end, there's a bearish buffing pattern, there's strong sell side. That it might come back down and so we don't want to hold this by hopelessly up to here you always respect every single supply and demand but when this short buy makes us money we wait now for the next opportunity if the next opportunity is to sell up here that would be even brilliant but this is a very good sell it is in line with the sentiment indicator where most institutional positions are pushing to the sell side i showed you guys how i calculate that in war room number 45 the video i dropped on sunday so check that out but more importantly, um, um, I'm still in line with the governor is doing, right? So immediately, I'm just going to hop straight into my, into my, into my um, live account. And the goal here is just to keep the trade lot size low for what I want. Because after that, it's just all pops. So I'm going to flip to daily, and I'm going to find that same supply we found on trade. And I believe it is the one in front of us here. Right, so I've got trade view open, right? So we, so we did something freaky like this on trade view. We say, this is the supply, but look, man, we have to we have to be, you know, mindful of the fact that smart money might say the previous supply at the back is not done. So the whole order block is technically this big. Now this white line is just here to help us find area of competition, which is where smart money is going to turn price. So I'm gonna put a, a and if, I, if I'm not mistaken, this was always gonna be a daily trade. This for me is a beautiful swing trade. You can break it down and go to the smaller time frames. I'm fine with that to get a smaller risk, but I'm just gonna safeguard this. And this trade is running up until where we believe, you know, you know, the, the end of the game comes for sellers this year. Euro USD sellers, we had fun because we were also US dollar buyers. But but you know, somewhere down here is the actual end of the road. So 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 this is a good swing. This is a very good long-term trade to, to look for, to budget for. So I'm looking to sell in the midst of a counter trend. Sounds like me. Right. So there's my entry. 
there's my stop loss and my take profit is there. So all I do now moving forward is I need to calculate how big the area of value is first in pips. It's actually time for breakfast. So I also like to appreciate my partner who's just patiently waiting for me to finish talking. This this looks like about 150 pips. It's like one, four, nine, and the last number doesn't count on this calculator. So it's one, four, nine pips. Let me just quickly do that calculation for you on trade view as well. But on my live platform, it looks like it's about 149 pips. Uh so you know we're gonna have to use a very small lot size. This is about a hundred and 45 pips, right? So it's very four pips difference. 45 pips, one 145, 149. Right. So naturally, what matters is what my live account says, because that's where I'm risking real money. And therefore, that is where I need to risk a code accurately. So now I'm gonna say, look, man, I'm risking 149. Right. And I'm still risking my maximum pay. So what's going on here? So I'm like, okay, fine. You can't take the trade. <laughs> So 0, 0,01. You see this here? It's 0, 0,01. Like you're gonna just 12 bucks, then you're gonna have to keep it as, as a maximum. There's, there's nothing. I've got six thousand US dollars in the account, but I want to grow it. I don't want to flaunt it and risk it and lose it. So it's telling me 0, 0, 0, 0,08. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a 0, 0,01 trade. I have nothing to lose. Nothing. Right. So let's go to the live account. You, you, got, you guys, you see, this looks stupid and minimum because it's one trade at a time. But if you're a full-time trader, what do you think you do every day? You build these positions day in, day out. Six good pending orders, seven here. Before you know it, at the end of the month, you've got 50 good strong trades and 10 were bad and 40 were good. Pay you one is to three, your account is growing. That's what people don't get. Right, they want the they, 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 they want the glory right now. They want to become a millionaire today. So number one is a sell limit order because I'm selling. I'm gonna go straight to 0, 0,01. And if you wanna use big, 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 big lot sizes, go get a big, 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 big account. Get big capital. So you, you can't do it without one or the other. Right. So you know the same probably the same for 100 US dollars. You probably because your your five percent is gonna be smaller. We're probably all going to be, you know, tracking about here on 0, 0,01. For those of you who are following step by step, I mean, if you're doing your own thing, also good for you. Nothing wrong with that. There is not one way to riches. I just, my job is to tell you guys only what I know works, right? So there's my, there's my lot size. There's my stop loss value, you know, and I don't even think I'm going to get a top dollars fifty. Uh, and it's because of how big the area of value is. Now, we could later on start to adjust this from an H4 perspective, right? So this is currently 15 US dollars. And remember, I'm only supposed to risk how much? $12.50, but this is currently 15 US dollars. So no, I can't, I can't just ignore it, right? I have to start to drill down. I have to make, as long as I get it down to uh, 12 bucks, as long as I'm risking what I am meant to risk. So when I reduce, get that down there, minimize a bit. Um, auto scroll, there we go. So now I can see, right. So there's my entry point and it looks like my instincts to draw that outside the daily time frame were correct. Because look, there's this situation that we need to account for. There's a strong supply, we can't ignore it. Now, here's the problem with this area of value. There's this area all the way up here but the reality is if i just focus on what i'm doing right now which is just here then all of a sudden what i'm risking and the distance of what i'm risking becomes more only then can i start to increase my lot size but if i want to cover this whole area just in case price decides to come up here because it's a fresh area of value, because price has not necessarily gone back up there. Because when price does that, it does leave room for that. Then I have no choice but to leave this trade as is, or to risk the small area and then take the loss and then come back and regroup for a sell over there. All right. So those are the main options. I mean, on trade view, I don't see it any other way. On trade view, I'll take the whole daily uh, area. Now let's let's do micro adjustments so you see what those look like. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on the current immediate daily, which is this area here. And if you go to H4, looking at my blue zone, you will see that, right? And so it's the distance between my green entry point up until behind this, which means now I have to go back to my calculator. I would actually just prefer to delete the 0, 0,01 because I'm making an adjustment to my entry point. I am making an adjustment. If you are happy with yours, you keep it. If it's all you can afford and you don't want to lose a trade because price did blah, 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 then you keep that one. But this one for me, I'm going to remove because I'm about to make an adjustment on it. Right. So now I'm going to recalculate how big this actual area of value is. And you're going to see it's a whole lot smaller. That's the power of MTA. So uh, I'm going to go for 65 pips. So note, I've made the zone this big. Now think about it real quick. 365 traders, look what I'm doing. I've made the zone this big. Why? First of all, there's the supply that I'm targeting. But per chance, price only wants to attack this big area of value. Look at where the area of value's competition starts. Right? You see, you see what I'm referring to? I'm referring to this. Per chance, price wants to come here. This is what price came back to and then dropped, right? So if price wants to make a, another touch somewhere here, when I'm drawing my current area of value for my current trade, I am definitely looking at this, sure, which is perfect. But if I draw it backwards, it is the entry point of that. So all I need to do is to make sure that my current entry point and stop loss, which is here, all right? Literally, I put my stop loss just above in the middle of this so that in the event price is coming to trigger this zone, it's still inside my blue. And so I can go down, you know, luckily enough with it. But yeah, long story short, I've forgotten how long that was. Just outside. So I'm going to make it 60 pips. Right, so about 62 pips. I'm going to make it 62 pips because I'm just looking at where price was rejected with these wicks here. So somewhere here is my entire area of value. So this is going to be my stop loss because I've reduced that size so I can take a better trade. Or no, I'm wrong and then lose to get back in again as quickly as possible in case price wants to go higher. And that's my entry point right there. So now I have those two lines and watch this whole thing change a little bit more now. So final take of how big the zone is, 73 pips now. All right, so let's see how much of a difference that makes. So I'm gonna come here and then say, actually it's 73 pips. Okay, and it's still parking me at 0 0.01. You know, this is technically 0 0.02 if you really look at the seven. Um, 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 but now I'm gonna take it to the live account and then put in the order. So pending order, uh, which screen am I sharing? Screen, there we go, screen one. So I'm gonna go pending order, sell limit. The price now is one. Why, why did I make the adjustment? Because I was gonna break my rule. I was gonna have to risk $15 on this trade and I don't wanna risk more than I need to. So stop loss number two, or stop loss here is one comma, one, six, three, five, nine, right? So if you're completely new to trading, this is what we're looking for. We're looking at that exchange rate number. Uh, and let's start off with 0, 0.02 as a pending order. Let's see how much that is. I'm trying to push it, but I don't want to pass my maximum off $12.50. Stop loss, how much is it? See there, it's 14, right? So I can't have it. I'm going to delete that. I'm done, guys. I'm done. I just wanted to do all of this with you step by step, right? So thank you for sticking with me. So at the end of the day, I have to stick to 0 0.01. I can't avoid it. And you know what? That's just, that's just because I only want to lose $250. That's just the way it has to be, right? So where's my entry point? One, one, five, six, one, three. Where's my stop loss value? One. One six three five nine. All right, and hopefully this brings us down to top box. Otherwise, you will. All right, so that's seven dollars. There we go. Got a seven dollar trade. 
easy peasy. Now I have to modify the trade because I, I, I um, there we go. Let's come here modify because we did not put in our take profit. It's going to be a swing trade. I'm going to hold this up until it gets all the way down there or try to anyways. That's one, one, zero, six, six, two. So I want to sell from up here all the way to down there. I'm going to hit modify. Now I've got to take profit of $50. So I'm risking $7. Wait, there we go. I'm risking almost $8 to make $50, which to me, once again, sounds like a perfect risk reward ratio. I'll tell you right now, 50 divided by eight is one is to six. Right, so I've got a one is to six, six risk reward ratio. So to stay in line with my plan, which is the last part of the video, and part of your life is to never do anything that's not in the spreadsheet. So put it in. Right, so on six thousand US dollar accounts, what's the pay? The pay is Euro USD, so that remains right. This is trade idea number two. All right, and this was also done on the eighteenth of, of January. Now it's going to be a sell order, and my entry point is based on what we put in there. One, comma one five six one three. And my stop loss is going to be 1, 16359. I mean, I, I really prefer the dots than the actual commas. Just OCD crippling 16359. If I can just fix the previous one quickly with you and then also fix the cells alignments. Uh, Right, so we've got that in, and then my profit target is one comma. Where's the TP? One comma one zero one zero six six two. There's a formula that I need to actually put into all these cells to keep them how I like them. And I should do that this afternoon when I'm free. Right, and I'm risking $7, right? Did we agree that $7.80, almost eight bucks. $7.46, so I'm risking $7.48. All right, and it's gonna just start putting some of these formulas in right now. Right, so it's uniform, right? So $7.80 and this one was 1,5, and this one is actually 1,6 risk reward ratio. And I want everything aligned this way. Uh, and the proper target, like I said, is gonna be the dollar amount. So let me just put here dollar. So you know here's how much you, how much did you actually make profit target. Then I'm going to talk about win or loss. This is actually a daily trade, right? So this, I'm taking this from the daily time frame, right? So it's a daily time frame, daily time frame, daily. Right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. We've got two of my current trade ideas, remote course for 365 Trading Academy. By the way, 50% um, um, discount ends this month. And then because we did discounts literally the whole of last year, we now have a fair idea that what grows the academy has nothing to do with discounts, just time, patience, and, and going about my business. And so we're not really doing a lot of discounts this year, just so you know. This might be the biggest discount of the year. After that, in line with the stuff we're doing in the podcast, one of the books I'm going to be doing with you later on is The Importance of Not Sacrificing Time for Money. And I've done that for two years for the Academy. Um, I thought it was necessary, and it was, and I don't regret it at all. But just to keep me motivated, I, I, I must also then balance myself. I can't break other principles of wealth just to, to appease people. All right. So, so please, if you're into discounts, the end of January is your last big discount for the whole year. So we know Black Friday, there might be small things here and there, but for the most part, we just want to see uh, the serious people, et cetera, et cetera. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Please do subscribe. Have a beautiful day, 365, shake my hand. Cheers, guys.